My name is David Gregory. I was the director of the documentary The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Shocking Truth, and I'll be moderating the audio commentary for The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. My name's Marilyn Burns, and I'm the one that survived. My name is Paul Partain, and I'm the one who didn't survive. I'm the saw -E. Uh, my name is Alan Danziger, and I played the van driver, but I also had an untimely death. <laughs> well, I'm Robert A. Burns, and I didn't die in it, but uh, I was the art director and did uh, stunts and special effects. ...and macabre as they were to see that day. For them, an idyllic summer afternoon drive became a nightmare. And right now we're listening to John Larroquette. Mm. <laughs> I was surprised that he did that. Well, that was one of the first things he ever did. So yeah. Nobody knew who the hell he was. Yeah, but he did it again for the remake, didn't he? Yeah. But that was like a I trivia question. It, I think. Yeah. You know, no, but I didn't even know that well, he I had talked about that. it being uncredited, but it's credited yeah. in here. Yeah. Does that, that right? It says narration yeah. by John Larroquette. Right. Bob, why don't you tell us about these uh, corpses we're about to see here? Well, actually, I didn't do these corpses. Uh, right. Toby did these. He, he was dying to make some corpses, and this was shot long after the film was shot, this uh, uh, opening sequence with these uh, slimy corpses. So uh, I didn't have anything to do with them. Where did he get them? He made them. Well, he, you know, the, we had the uh, skeleton that is used throughout the film, and he took the skeleton and kind of wadded stuff up and made it <laughs> out of the skeleton. I think Warren Skeren helped on that, too. I don't know who all of Because Warren you know. was an artist and yeah, a sculpture. He, was... he had a hand in that. But when I saw it Rushes, I mean, I never saw this aspect. And to me, that really is what I thought really gave it... Well, it certainly uh, put the sound effect of what mm -hmm. Polaroid, uh, Polaroid picture sounds like. <laughs> Every film yeah. since then has used this sound and yeah. this effect for Polaroid pictures. Yeah, Wayne Bell told me that uh, in order to make the sounds that are going on right now, Toby actually shut himself in a room with a bunch of tools and some meat <laughs> and basically just went off on his own and, and Wayne actually asked him what he was doing and uh, he wouldn't say. Grave robbing in Texas is this hour's top news story. An informant led officers of the Muerto County Sheriff's Department to a cemetery... And do you know where this cemetery is? Yeah, tell yes. Leander. No, this is not the Leander Cemetery. They, this was, uh, they went to another cemetery for this. This isn't the Baghdad Cemetery. Isn't the Baghdad? No, they, they, when we get to the other part where they stop in the cemetery, they shot that in the Baghdad Cemetery, but this was another cemetery. Uh. Did this cemetery have, uh, was more attractive than the other cemetery? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know. Know. You wonder why. I mean, <laughs> I think they probably snuck into this one. I think it was a left unattended. Uh, I think an, unattended, oh, I understand. <laughs> That's the deal. Well, this is the one that people are dying to get into. I see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I get it. Oh. It's going to be a long day. Did you know that? <laughs> it's going to get longer. It's going to get longer. Then. <laughs> So this, as far as you know, was shot at the end of the process? Oh, well, long after. During the uh, editing sequence, this was added on. This was a post-production, as they say. It's a very good touch. It, it, it helped um, set, set a mood for the movie, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. People have asked me about, what the hell is this? Which is, uh, it was a stock footage, but it's of a sunspot, sunstorm. Oh, I remember solar, that. Okay. Real close-up yeah. to solar storms. It's, I'm sure this is just stock footage. It was. I don't think they went out and aimed a camera at the sun. They went blind when they tried that. Yet Daniel Pearl did go ahead and shoot quite a lot of close-ups of the sun and, uh, well, as close as he could get with the, the moon. The moon, yeah. Daniel the did moon. the moon. Yeah, he kept the moon. shooting the moon. They had to get the perfect moon shot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ronald Bozeman has gone on to win a couple of Academy Awards. No kidding. Yeah, he was Silence a, of the Lambs. But I always have it in for him because, as I said, he bar they borrowed my shirt from that from the movie for a close up that I wasn't in. I never got that shirt back. Wow. <laughs> and I still, if I see him to this Sue day, the bastard. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how many of the crew has gone on to uh, long careers in the uh, in the in the industry. Yeah. Larry Carroll. And yeah, I saw him on Dead one Nicolai. shoot. I was in, uh, I think it was Rolling Thunder in San Antonio. And Larry peeked out from behind the camera. He says, hey, Franklin, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> and released. A 16 -story building. This was supposed to start with a dead dog in the script. And the day they went out to shoot, when they were going to shoot y'all running up and down the highway, 
there was a dead horse by the side of the road, yeah. but it was too icky for them to shoot, and so they didn't shoot it, and so they wanted to get this shot later on, and they wanted to use the armadillo, and they didn't want to... I told them I would loan it to them if they didn't crush it, and so they did, and so that's how it starts that way. <laughs> but the day they were shooting all that, you all know, driving up and down the highway, there was this dead horse by the side of the road. I remember that. It's just it, been a it, perfect it, it, thing. To, but what can you say? And there he is. There's my favorite oh, shot. Oh, his glory. Notice in the right-hand pocket there's a slight bulge, which happens to have a check that says paid in full. It was my last shot. Is that right? That's right. It has a large bulge? <laughs> Not a little large <laughs> bulge. It's <laughs> a small check. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell us, Paul, um, how you <laughs> did this scene, how you talked about it with your director and uh, agreed to do it? Uh, Toby said, here's what we want. And I said, OK. There's the, the bit where we go down the, the hill after you know, getting blown off right there. And I told uh, Toby that I would do it, but he had to do it first. And he, he was game. He said, sure. So they moved just off camera. And he got in the wheelchair and went down. And then Kim got in it. And then Daniel Pearl got in it. And then Lou Perryman got in it. And the whole damn crew was going down the... And it was so much fun. I finally said, give me the damn chair. and shoot this thing. <laughs> the e-ticket ride. Yeah. In the original script, there was a whole lot more of the driving around of the, of the countryside. There was a lot yeah. more of the uh, talking about uh, astrology and what have you. See, there's my shirt. Damn. Oh, and you didn't get that I shirt back. back. And it was used in another scene? It's in that scene just before this, which is a faraway shot. Ron Bozeman is in oh. that scene. And, uh, Bozeman is wearing that shirt. Unit. I'm sure he's still got that shirt. I'm, I think you're right. <laughs> and I'm sure he still wears it. Him or email him. <laughs> hey, man, you believe all that stuff your old lady's talking to me? I don't know. This was the Baghdad Cemetery in Leander, yeah. or outside of Leander, in the Baghdad yeah. community. Oh, my There's goodness. There's Joe Bill. You remember, remember that? Oh, yes. How this, could we forget? Yeah, yeah, this guy was, uh, the drunk in the tire was quite There's a... Uh, He's my favorite guy in the, in the movie, John Henry Falk. Yeah. What a was, raconteur. You know, what a storyteller. Just, yeah. just the whole movie was worth it just to meet this Bill guy. Kramer sitting up there on the side with the beard. Yeah, John Henry Falk was one of the a real well-known political commentary. He was blackballed mm -hmm. during the uh, I think it's Jerry Green who hauled you off. With the... Uh, Saying, I'm going to steal you, girl. McCarthy, McCarthy. hearings. <laughs> this guy was one of the most respected uh, stage actors in Austin for years and years yeah. and years. Right What's here. his name? Joe Bill Hogan. Wow. Is he still alive? I don't know. I haven't seen him in years and years. I know, the, I know the guy, the guy with Marilyn there, he's dead. He was a radio guy. Really? Yeah. And, of course, John Henry's died. We're getting too damned old, folks. There's them that laughs and knows better. I did a show with Joe Bell one time. I was supposed to catch him when he came off stage. And it was such a boring show, I, I wasn't thinking. All of a sudden, he goes, wham, right there at my feet. Well, maybe he got back at me with this thing. <laughs> Dug up to me. Now the fun starts. Mm -hmm. Why don't you talk about filming yeah. in this van? Oh, that was a lot of fun. It was nice and hot and stuffy and yeah. sweaty. It was brutal. And smelly. I bet in the new chainsaw they had an air-conditioned van. <laughs> <laughs> and I think after each take they had Which a, uh, what ruined it. <laughs> a, uh, what, what, the trailer that brought us, and then you'd go into it and cool off. After the, if they had several takes, right? The, mm -hmm. And the ladies would go in and they'd, you know, print them and, you know, fix them up. With me, they couldn't do anything for me. I got an email a couple of days ago asking about the photo, the Polaroids of the cows and where they were taken. And I told them they were taken when they did this second unit stuff here with yeah, the uh, I got drive the bys. You know, and then he wrote back and says, where is that? And there's been about four emails about the, the po Polaroids of the dead cows. The people out there that have hang-ups on in all sorts of strange aspects of this thing. It, someone last night asked me where the restaurant is that the house, where the house was moved to. The, Kingsland. Where? Yeah. Kingsland. Kingsland. Yeah. Apple that was an Lakes. important issue last night. It's actually a beautiful, they restored it, it's beautiful. The restaurant is terrific. 
And that's where they did that Halloween deal, the Alamo Draft House. They did a Rolling Thunder outdoor show for Halloween. I think they're promo promoting it or they're not opposed to it. Right, so they're actually Nobody selling T-shirts and things so, like that? I don't know no, if they bought that, not that, that, that far. I, was, I wanted to put lady fingers on the menu, but I don't think they did. Yeah. Because when we went to uh, Kingsland to film out there, it was actually called the Kingsland Old Town Grill. Yeah, it, it, the yeah. people that moved it out there originally didn't want to know anybody to know it had a connection, and then uh, they sold it recently to a couple that that thinks it's kind of fun, and so they've been uh, included it in their. Uh, Forgotten what the name of it four is. Beers. Four, 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 four bears. bears. Four bears. Four bears. That's four what we had before we started this. I think. Four <laughs> bears. That's what we needed. That's really. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we just picked up track. Where are you headed, man? Sal, you work at that place? Well, there's Ed. No. Yeah. How did you get stuck way out here? I, I was at the slaughterhouse. I got an uncle that works at the slaughterhouse. Hey, my, my brother worked there. My, my grandfather, too. <laughs> my family's always been in me. My whole family attractions. Hey, man, did you go in that slaughter room or whatever they call it? As people in the van, as the kids in the van, did you actually get to meet Ed Neal uh, and interact with him much before you met him in the scene, or did you meet this weird guy who was in character when you did the scene? As my, my recollection is I met him, you know, doing the scenes. But after the scenes were over, actually, he was a lot of fun. He was just a hoot. So he's one of the few guys that I remember interacting with and having a good time, as opposed to Leatherface, who I didn't know, I didn't meet. Yeah. You know, until after the movie was over. Yeah, but, he stayed by himself. Yeah. He yeah. had to... It was like them against us, mm -hmm. was my, yeah. my recollection. I knew Ed a little bit through uh, a, a theater called, one of the local theaters down, uh, and he had the lead in, in a show that we did, and I worked lights on it, so I knew a little bit about him, or I knew him by sight. No, it's and and then, then we didn't see each other until he came on the set there. And they scrape all the flesh away from the bone. A lot of people ask about the van. The van belonged to Ted Nikolai, right. who was the sound yeah. man. And yeah. people ask about all these things, whether where that we kept them, whether we got them, and don't realize that this was done on such a shoestring budget. We just begged, borrowed, and stole everything we could, and so. Things were borrowed and then returned, and uh, people asked about the chainsaw all the time. That was somebody's chainsaw we borrowed, and then we gave it back to him. Yeah. But you still have that knife, right, I still Paul? have the knife, yeah. And are willing to sell it at the right oh, yes, price. Yes, <laughs> yes. Right, for the right price, we can, you know, uh, retirement's coming up soon, so. The, wheel, the wheelchair was rented from, <laughs> yeah. a, from a drug store. I've been waiting for somebody to try and sell the wheelchair. What are you doing? I think I kept telling Ed to just hang on and that the laser technology would develop to get that stain off of his face. <laughs> <laughs> I like the blood tube thing there. That was cool. Yeah, how did how was that done? The special okay. effect there. Oh, that's the simplest special effect on the world yeah. having a we tube take, run behind taped yeah. on behind the thing. We take we take ball. the blade so it wouldn't cut and then, it. Uh, and then tape the, the tube on and he had a squeeze tube. Something like that. I had filed the blade down thoroughly so it didn't, you know, couldn't. It actually, looks, I mean, it looks great. Just the it. way that thing comes but across. But it's just, you know, it's just a, a, a tube of blood down behind the blade, and then a squeeze. He's squeezing a bulb with blood in it as he pulls it along. <laughs> I have this knife. I don't remember what I ever did with that. I had that. Looks razor, like a barber's, like a barber's razor. Well, I know on that one before we did the cutting on I me, mean, I took a, I took some uh, magic tape, Scotch yeah. thing, and I put about two layers of that on the blade itself. So when he goes go whack, you were smart. No, I was a chicken shit. How many <laughs> times? I didn't want to how many times cut. did they do that? Did they do that scene? Do you recall? Was it a one, one take, or did you have to do it? I don't recall. It wasn't a lot of takes. You know, we didn't do a lot of takes in that van thing. It's kind of shoot it and roll it as much as you can. and Because inside, besides us, is, is what, Toby's in there? And Ted doing the sound? Yeah. At least Toby and It's Ted. 100 degrees on yeah. that road. Yeah. Well, of course, there's, there's no uh, AC in that. Daniel yeah, Pearl with all the cameras. And Daniel, well, plus lights. 
Forget plus, about it. Look, Daniel, no, nobody's hair is blowing. Daniel's always, <laughs> yeah. Daniel's always loved to shoot in small places. Well, he got That's his one of the things there. He's, he does real well is getting maximum use out of real enclosed spaces. And I've worked with other cinematographers on something like this. They'd want to cut a hole in the side of the van and have it, mm -hmm. you know, shoot it from mm -hmm. way outside. But that probably wouldn't have been a possibility with Ted's van. No, no. I don't think he no. would have appreciated that. Ted he, didn't, did. he didn't really appreciate it when I started digging into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. He had that knife. I told him it was for, it was for art. <laughs> he didn't. No. That was your character doing that, Paul. It, it was necessary to the film. <laughs> this is one of the things that set this film apart, was things like this that is the surrealism of, uh, you know, somebody taking your picture and, you know, then you wanted to sell it to you and things like this. And a weird guy that doing is so, it. You know, that is so missing in so many of them, this total uh, weird surrealism that then he would have this little ceremony to burn it up and things like this and comes prepared with all the stuff to do, but it's very difficult to uh, pull off. And do you think that was probably just uh, just luck because of inexperienced filmmaking? Well, no, the, you know, the, it, it was written, you know. It was written, but it's, it's a, you know, it's the surrealism of the situation. And, you know, rather than just having a bad guy that is a bad guy, you know, he's a, uh, you know, not only does he look weird and act weird, but he does these things that are just so out of your, the realm of norm that it's very creepy and it sets up, you know, there's nothing, uh, you know, there's nothing life-threatening here, but it's just this weirdness that is just so far from anyone's realm of experience that it makes it that much creepier. There he goes, ah! ah. Feel that horn he got, look. Ah. <laughs> That's creepy. I still have the scar. Kind of, <laughs> kind of hard to see. So maybe you can sell the scar on eBay. <laughs> so okay this work of art that he's uh putting on the uh, yeah. on the side of the van here is he actually trying to do a symbol no, you're, you're <laughs> or is he actually the thing they are <laughs> he was just smearing his blood uh, on the side of the van understands that's what it seems like well, here well, but when you like, actually see it like in a bit it looks symbol. like a symbol <laughs> of some kind I, I think toby said he was going for something like that it would have taken a lot to develop it. I don't know. <laughs> I see. I think it just works out to be a smear. I think after this movie, less hitchhikers were picked up. I would. I, oh, I guarantee never, you that. I've never checked into it, but I would venture <laughs> to put the quabage on picking up strangers. I tell you, I've never picked up a hitchhiker after this film. Upsetting persons around you could make this a disturbing and unpredictable day. One of the original titles was Saturn in Retrograde, oh, yeah. which comes from all this stuff about reading yeah. the... Uh, well, at least the, he uh, wasn't called Head Cheese. Or no, was was Stalking Leatherface. Or, or Leatherface. Leatherface. Yeah, so that Leather, was yeah. brilliant to me. Well, Leatherface yeah. was rejected because people yeah. thought it sounded too much like leather, Leatherneck with, uh, for referring to Marines. And so, oh, okay. and, you know, Leatherface was, at, at the time, not part of the American lexicon. Yeah. When we that was to me was brilliant the change to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre because that just summed it right up. Somebody actually asked me the other day, and it's the first time I've been asked, but apparently other people have, was like, "How dare you call it the I Texas Chainsaw because, Massacre when not many people you, were killed with a chainsaw?" Uh huh, Robert, he was my good friend. This is one of my favorite scenes I because like it just went out of control. They were changing the, way, little bit the of light was room. changing on, and they had to figure out some way to cover the light chain, so they had the guy looking up at the sky all the time. And... Toby and Kim had some things in here that they intended to come across as humor that never did, and one of them, uh, they were mighty proud of it. The sign on the store here, it never reads, but uh, they, they, they thought they had a kind of a 007 pussy galore kind of diet. They made me make the sign that said W.E. Slaughter for the name of this uh, place like here. Joint? Barbecue up off to the side it said W E Slaughter Barbecue. Mm. But I guess that was the this what was a good got picked up that you are cooks one. later. Yeah. I mean to me this was the uh, the funniest scene because this was. as the soap goes on, I inadvertently hit the windshield wiper and it just poured, you know, soapy water up and down Jim Sido's face. And that's when we just lost control. Yeah. I think Bill, myself, 
and we were just laughing hysterically, so much so that every take was kept, we did, did the same thing. Stop. And Toby got really furious. He walked off the set. And, and Kim actually finished it up. So what should have been a five or ten minutes thing took an all day. Well, about right here is where Jim yeah. gets douched. I mean, he just... It, it, you remember it, that? Oh, God, yeah. It's just so that coming thing. down, and he's so still good. trying to say his lines, and it <laughs> was over. It was over. It, out. it was funny. <laughs> Thanks to your friend. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever happened? This gas station is still there. Yeah. It was in the Tender Mercies. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It was? Yeah, I'll, I'll bet you. I mean, it looks just like the same so. way. Well, it might have been. I think so. They shot most of that way up in uh, North Texas. This is where, on the way to Gonzales? Mm. Uh, Bastrop. Road, back, you in, go to Bastrop and t take a Yeah, take Bastrop. A ride. It's a little, a little yeah. area called String Prairie. Well, it may, it may be wrong. About it just closed. This, this place just closed uh, uh, several months ago, I found out. Oh, did out. it? Well, it was interesting when we went to shoot the documentary. We uh, we went by here just to get some B-roll, and of course there was no gas, which is exactly as it is in the movie. So that's probably why it closed. It's right. Yeah. And Toby said there was some that, right those shots. <laughs> you know, there's 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 very little sexual content, I think, here. Unfortunately. But we sure like what we see. Yeah. Hell, we should have stuck back there for gas. Hey, you think this place has room service? See, there we are, tearing up Ted's fan. So Ted wasn't too happy about no, that? No, he wasn't too happy about that. I just start doing that. Hey, I bet now, Toby said that there was uh, a political relevance to the fact that there was a gas shortage. Well, there was a gas shortage yeah. at that time. You know, that was in the... That was uh, when they, the Arab uh, embargo or boycott yes. or whatever it was, and so uh, there was gas shortage. And there's another reference down the line about the utilities, the cost of yeah. utilities when he's taken around the sack. You know, so there's, all, to me, there's a lot of unintended or intended humor. Well, mm -hmm. it's there, you know. And the, oh, yeah, that so was bizarre. intended. I think, I think that there's was a lot of funny thing. stuff in there. Do you think I said something made him mad? <laughs> What? Frankly, you're crazier than he was. <laughs> hey, I got us some barbecue. Hmm? Loot's the closest place to get gas. Now, what about these costumes? Did, were you guys just asked to come in your own clothes, or was there somebody who actually picked the costumes they for you? They picked well, the costumes. I think they wanted the white pants and then the white trim around the purple shirt, so when I was running at night, you could see her. <laughs> That's what the purpose is. And those bell bottoms are... Really, something. They, yeah, they just I had those. They, didn't to... they just said, "Where would you know?" But nobody picked out what you know. I just showed up with that. And they yeah, there wasn't fine. a costume around the picture, and so some of the uh, yeah. some of the costumes were. I had done some of them, like Grandpa's mm -hmm. was a, a suit that I've still got and things like that. But uh, on some of it was just catch as catch can. Yeah, on mine, I talked to Kim for a couple of minutes, and came up with that. And yours was good. I thought it was Franklin. You were very good, Franklin. Excellent, Franklin. You <laughs> see, I am whining again. You see, the old whiny bastard. I don't know what to do. You were always in character. I thought you really were like that well, until years later. Well, it's, I was afraid I'd lose him. I mean, people you were ask. Great. Franklin was a tough guy because he's 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 whiny throughout the whole damn thing, and just. I don't know. Things weren't going right. I was, I was, I was afraid not. I was afraid if, if I ever, you know, when they said take a break, if I really took a break, I couldn't get him back. Well, you sure kept it up good. You <laughs> definitely were. People do it. People That's do a nice way that. to say what an asshole you were. <laughs> <laughs> wow. People do ask that later on. They say, is he really that uh, blind? Yeah, really <laughs> yeah. You were very good. I really like the disgusting uh, I'd like sausage to thank the members of the academy. Out. Who found oh, these, that these that spots? Is... Who found these spots? Well, this was a, this was a found location because it was right directly across, across the road the from, from, the the, house. from the house. And so it was written into the uh, script because this was just directly across the Quick yeah. Hill Road from the uh, the house. And so it was written in. 
And there was Smokey. Smokey Isger was the fellow that lived in, in the, the house. Yeah. He used to work for, I think, because uh, I worked for the Austin Travis County Mental Health Mental Retardation Center. And he was, I think, in the drug Well, his father, I program. mean, his brother, uh, Stuart Isger, I think, ran the uh, drug thing there. The drug thing? And uh, I don't know whether Smokey worked for that or not, but I'm pretty sure it was his brother Stuart that was the one that was in the uh, mental health area there. Not that we were in the mental health area. We were on the, we other, were. We were on the other side of the mental <laughs> if, health if area. If they could have found out about us, we would have been in the mental oh, health area. Oh, that is so disgusting. I always like this I disgusting uh, sausage I sticking I out. I couldn't believe you put that in your mouth. Well, it was, It you was know. very effective, but God, I couldn't believe you put that in your mouth. It would have been better if it was cooked. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm talking Jesus. about. Oh. Well, you know. You know, all these little things just helped... It helped... It, the actor find there. <laughs> you know, well, find, find your real soul. Yeah, here. really. Put this piece of crap Ooh, in your mouth. it's so disgusting. Yeah. But also having a handicapped person. I mean, I think they were on the cutting edge. Definitely. Well, you know, to incorporate that into this guy, you know, this kind of movie. That was a good idea. Yeah, yeah because handicapped people never get it in horror movies. Never. Right. That's that's true. You know. This is my. Room. I got to stay here one time when I was eight years old, uh -huh. right after my grandmother died. This whole scene is so bizarre because there's no dialogue. You know, they just, you remember that? Yeah, they said, just make up make your up own anything. Gi gibberish. And yeah. I don't even know how that thing, you know, played. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't fall through the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it all sounds very natural. So, you know. <gasps> oh. You know, in the bedroom scene, what's going well, we're, on we're, with the wallpaper. You asked yeah. me a question. Oh, so <laughs> 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 it's like it was just oh, yesterday. With the zebras on the I like, wall. I like the sound effect of spiders. <laughs> you asked me... <laughs> what, happened, what happened or something? You asked me... You, yeah. Here, we were thinking right about here. Bizarre. Here. Better days, no, these animals used to taught me to sleep when I was a little kid. Look at the zebras, see? Uh -huh. I have these fascination for the zebras. Hey! You must have gained some arm muscles in this period. Probably did. Did you have to take any lessons on how to use this thing, or anybody yeah. work with you? Did they? They just came no, naturally. Just came uh, actually, my grandfather was in a chair for seven years, yeah. and uh, he had he had passed away a few years before. So I saw him do all that, uh -huh. but with one he had had a stroke, so he would get around with one arm and one leg. And I felt really bad because it was all I could do to get around with two arms mm -hmm. and two legs. I like this scene. This was this was my first day of shooting, and it worked out to be pretty good. And why don't you tell uh, you tell us about the fans who came up to you recently at one of the conventions, and the spitting? Oh yeah, it was out at, at the Chiller Show in April, and uh, and these these four guys come up. And they knew all the Franklin lines, and they were tickled to see me, and I was delighted to see them, and they were going, and finally, at the end, they all just blew these mouth farts. They went, <laughs> you know, all four of them, and they would just get there, and they'd just start giggling and, and doing that. Oh, my gosh. I got a picture of them all together going, <laughs> <laughs> Then you had to clean the lens. The yeah, right. And we'll have to clean the microphone here in a little bit, too. Or was that something you came up with yourself to do? Then? No, Toby, that was Toby's idea. Was, you know, the, that was the, in the script. Yeah. The raspberry? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on, Franklin. It's going to be a fun trip. Yeah, at this point, I think the, the audience is losing their sympathy for the handicapped yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's got they're losing their sympathy. I think they're definitely losing the sympathy. Thank God the crew didn't lose theirs. <laughs> Now, did you do uh, much art direction in this house, Bob, or was was no, actually like this? You know, the, uh, the the thing he's about to run across here. What this house was, the, the, this is the way it was, and so that's why it was written into the script. You know, what was incredible about this house is the, the daddy long legs. You couldn't have done that in a movie. That was real. Yeah, yeah. they were yeah. just daddy long legs, and it was like all over. It was. It and that big old spider that was outside that we couldn't walk through, and there was there was one that was there, and they said just don't touch it, leave it there, maybe it'll be there when we I mean, shoot. it was a set that was already designed by Mother Nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jerry and Sally going? This house burned a couple of times. It was a, apparently a vandal 
And when it burned, people said, the chainsaw house is burned down. And so I thought it was the other one, but no, this was the one that... Uh, Now this I did. Yeah, what was the what was the direction here and for the the thing that's up above him? Well, that was a little piece of uh, a sculpture that uh, Ron Bozeman had. So this thing here was mm -hmm. a was an existing a pre-existing little bit of sculpture somebody had around. Was it the wind that caused that the feather? Did you notice yeah. that little? Yeah. And so are we uh, are we supposed to? I'm maybe looking into this too literally, but we're supposed to assume that uh, Leatherface and Co. kind of go into the other it's house just... and put stuff in there as well. It was just a. It was just something that it's a kind of subliminal thing that there's weird stuff going on, and uh, I don't think, yeah, I think, I don't you're, think you're, right. you're specifically supposed to know who did it particularly, but it was just a. Well, well I actually, always this assumed is, you know, that it was we're, we're in the we're in the location, so. Uh, so, you know, this is nearby, so they get around and they do these weird things. It's where they say Franklin never was a little boy. Huh. Well, this was supposed to be like a nice. little lake or a little pond or something? So. That's where well, they were going to go the, swimming. This was what theoretically was the swimming hole. How many must have carried him when he was little? Franklin never was little. Look at those bell bottoms on Bill. Mm -hmm. Bill is actually a set decorator now in uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, mm -hmm. neat. A wonderful guy, really t terrific guy. Yeah, I actually worked with him, and they, all, they have this weird uh, picture. Uh, what was it? Uh, uh, mausoleum. It was something that they shot half of, and they came back and shot the other half of it years later. And I was a uh, art director on the second half of it years later. This was something that was kind of, uh, wasn't in the script, and it was just kind of a last-minute thing. I wasn't actually there, and they called me up to come out and do this. So I had to go rushing out while I was actually doing other things, but uh, that was a kind of a last-minute deal. But that also really adds to the creation of the atmosphere here, how you hear all yeah. the, the, the tin like cups clear, and yeah. stuff. You really nailed that one, didn't you? Now all the car, all these cars under here are the crew cars. <laughs> you probably recognize your own cars under there. And this is obviously supposed to be the the cars of past victims. Mm. The uh, Volkswagen Beetle was Wayne Bell's car, I think. Well, the the white Volkswagen. Yeah, there's Beetle. two of them. So how were these uh, locations found? Were you involved in that at all, Bob? Yeah, the, some friends of mine were living in this place, and uh, I had not been there, but a friend, a mutual friend said, you ought to go check out Smokey's place. And then here the idea is that they're, they're using uh, the generator to generate electricity for the house, so they're self-contained. For some reason, a lot of people didn't catch on to that. It seems to me rather obvious, but... Did yeah, it's a very, very nice forgiving? house, and uh, we, they were very proud of the, the fact, and it was very well kept inside. It had the original wallpaper, and uh, so they said, well, you know, we could do it if we if we kept, you know, good care of it. And we said, well, of course we will, and then we didn't trash the place. <laughs> Did they ever get it back right? Uh, this, uh, this swing set here, the whole idea was that, that, <laughs> I think that that's this your was answer. where... <laughs> This was where Leatherface, this was for Leatherface, and so he was being a big guy, they had to make the swing set out of, uh, these are railroad ties, but that basically he's like a big kid, and so they make this swing for him. Is that right? Well, he obviously used the same construction for the meat hook rig as well. Yeah, it was a, where did the tooth we had the same from? contractors after all. <laughs> where did the tooth come from? Well, it's really funny, when there's a friend of mine out in L.A. had a friend that worked in a dental school and we needed some teeth and so he sent me this box of teeth in the mail and uh, it was always nice to get a box of teeth in the mail <laughs> do you still have any of them i do somehow i'm not surprised at that in. bob I just <laughs> <laughs> But this is a, a really a beautiful old house, and now it's been 
transformed into the yeah. restaurant in Kingsland we've talked about. I always like this part because up until Bill walks in and gets hit, it's like a cigarette commercial. I mean, they're going through the... Uh, you're too young to know cigarette commercials, but mm -hmm. like the old Salem commercials come through, walking in the sunshine and going through, and everything's nice and breezy and bright, and then all of a sudden, kabam. Yeah, here, of then course, you know, it, leather it, it hits is the one all the like harder because of that. Leatherface is the one making the pig noises and the strange squealing noises thing here. See? Again. And you said he didn't have any lines. Wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> How do you spell that? Oh, oh no! Oh. See, only in horror movies, though, do you go through the door. You hear that squealing, you're out of here. You know, but only in horror movies, no, go right into it. You're two counties That's what away. That's you gotta love. Kirk! That starts it. That sets right there yeah. to me. Yeah. And then you're it back outside the in the cigarette commercial. Yeah. Kirk, where are you? Let's have a springtime fresh. Yeah. But you know, it doesn't bode well for uh, Terry McMahon here. No, no. She's... no. So I assume that that uh, that door was uh, was something you created and wasn't actually in the house. No, it wasn't in the house. Originally, I wanted an overhead door, but there wasn't any way to rig one, and so it came, I came up with this idea of the sliding door there. And so that's pretty good. Yeah. That sealed it. Yeah. That's a big exclamation point. On yes. That first killing. Very good, Pop. Like you're not coming out of there, you know. Yeah. Once you're there, forget about it. The show's over. Then everybody said, I hate to give trade secrets, but it's actually yeah. a very flimsy door. It sounded good, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, this, of course, is Terry McMinn, who is uh, one of the few people who's not too keen to acknowledge her chainsaw past. <laughs> well, I think she's gotten more with it lately. Is she still here, Austin? I don't know. She, she went away and then she came back for years, and I don't know. She was in the flower business here for a while. Oh, you the really messed up room. their room. Yeah. They thought their place would be safe for a movie shoot. It's just a movie. It's, what could they do to the place? It's the famous chicken in the cage. This is one image that people just really sticks with people and people ask about. Why do you think that is, considering all the other stuff because that's going it's, on here? Because you know, a bizarre, some, once again, something out, outside of the realm of, you know, Now, that reason. cage has got a small door on it. How'd you get the chicken in the cage? Well, it's I mean, that from chicken below. is from well, below. Slide, it's, it's, the bottom of it slides down. Okay. Down. Very good thought, Paul. Well, it's, not, it's, got a, it's got a door this big, like a canary door. And then it's got the noise that it's the, the clacking of that bass, you know, yeah. the, of the cage there sets up. So much of the sound effects and the uh, the background, and this is another image that people like and reproduce at times. But the furniture, out of the bones, I mean, you don't see that in, in, in any of the malls nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so you'd think it'd pretty, catch on. Yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, that was a pretty rustic kind of a, a set piece. You don't see that. You don't know, you don't. See, there's an opportunity. Yeah, there. missed. eBay, look out. You actually had an exhibition of some of these uh, pieces of art, didn't you? Bob? Oh yeah, at the at the University of Texas uh, Art Museum before the film came out, they had a, had an exhibition of the uh, furniture. A friend of mine gave the name of the came up with the name of the uh, art uh, of the exhibition. We called it Memories of Meat. Right. That's a nice, that's a nice moniker. Uh -huh. But here the idea was that, you know, they take things apart, and so there's uh, taking apart radios, and there's, you know, they, they, do, they make things out of things, and so this was kind of the workroom. The art room. The uh -oh. art. Oh, there we go. she's in for it. Oh, oh, look out, look out. Wow! And this, to this day, is one of the most shocking scenes in all of filmdom. And they think you've seen this this awful thing. There's not one drop of blood in this whole scene. You know, and this, I remember seeing the dailies on this, and Terry was sitting right beside me. And that was the mildest of the cuts that they used there. I know there was, there was one where Gunnar throws her up there, and he goes, mm, like that. 
And that one, for some reason, just get, I, I lost it on that one. And I knew she was all right. She was sitting right beside me, just like you are. But no. <laughs> so it's telling me that they, they got this. They came by the sink when they sold the house. They came by the sink and sold it on eBay. <laughs> Kitchen sink. There's supposedly a filing cabinet that's on eBay for sale. <laughs> I mean, I don't even see it. I don't know how it got there. That, that are you familiar with that? No, I don't have any filing cabinets, but. Must have been I like Pace's the meat office. grinder there. That you looking over the meat grinder. Oh, my. great cut. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? The same saw cut? Yeah. Or? Oh, I was no, talking about the film cut. Coming to get you. You don't think it means anything? We'll protect you if he tries to get you. Well, I bet it's about me. He's gonna kill you, Franklin. And this was all shot in the same locale as the, as yeah, the house. Yeah, all this stuff was just yeah, shot this right a, around there. The house is, <clears throat> is like back here. It was know, quite the a timing. large piece of property. And then also we shot across the street around, yeah. the, uh, around the stone house. A lot of the chase sequences were on mm -hmm. that property over there. But they also were very <clears throat> cognizant of the time because they wanted again to have the sun setting when I start walking to the house for my, yeah. my final walkthrough. You didn't have it last. You had it last. I gave it to you, remember? What'd you do with it? Well, I don't know. Didn't I give it back to you? And was it all this banter between you guys? Was this uh, scripted? Yeah. Yeah. And it was scripted differently. <laughs> it, 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 as the day wore times. on. As the day wore on. As the day wore different on. Different things yeah. happened. Well, yeah, Kim day, would come out and say, well, let's write this one. And as each day they'd bring new pages, of, this is what it's going to be today. Yeah. I still have the original script, and I have, I guess it has, I don't know, how many different colored pages. I mean, every day yeah, we get it. Change. It's just in recently seeing it that I realized that the, the attitude she had when I said, I'm going. And then you said, I forget what you said. But there <laughs> I think she just she's not happy. Okay. Not really happy about said, it. Yeah. No, you're leaving me with this guy. <laughs> said, okay, you're going. Yeah. Guess what? <laughs> you might as well keep going. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I. I don't blame you. I'm so let's talk a bit about the conditions under which you were shooting. What kind of uh, craft services and things like that did you have? Well, actually, the, the one thing, the best part of the whole thing was Sally Nicola was the oh, yeah. uh, caterer, and it just kept the whole thing going. I think the whole thing would have collapsed. She made some Greek dishes that were great. She didn't, you know, it'd be out there. There was no, the craft services were pretty negligible, but when she'd come out there with the dinner, she'd bring out these just fabulous gourmet meals that she'd made and it was the only yeah. thing that kind of kept the morale going well i missed all those i never ate so i couldn't yeah. it's just amazing meals they'd bring out there i didn't get many of them because i wasn't because you had your figure see time. now i had to keep my figure up <laughs> so i ate all those meals i seem to recollect a couple of meals oh you know but not amazing not, not too, but they were excellent oh. she was terrific yeah but of course it was blazing hot as well oh, well yeah ruthless. i mean it's it's texas in august and uh, and inside the house, you guys really didn't get much into it. How the stench, I really didn't have much in there, but it was just awful. People were well. There's that, up, that one sick. scene, it was you know, that dinner table scene. 110 degrees. It was just awful. Yeah, the dinner table scene. We'll get to that later on. It was it was the insufferable thing. Fortunately, I didn't have to be in there. So you're actually mm -hmm. character acting here, uh, uh, oh, Paul yeah, Marilyn, kind of so there just... driving you crazy, no yeah, doubt. Yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> this is a great, to me, it was a, a beautiful shot, you know, mm -hmm. the, su uh, the sun at the, at the perfect time. Yeah, that is nice. How long were you on the film for, Alan? A couple of weeks, two of mm -hmm. the longest weeks. No, actually, I really enjoyed myself because I had just little parts, it, it wasn't... It and he really cracked everybody right. up. He was the funniest guy. <laughs> he still is. <laughs> <laughs> he made party. his laugh. <laughs> he had the strangest Texas accent. I'm from a small Texas town in the Bronx, you know, so. <laughs> Come on, you guys, goofing <laughs> here. Yeah. That's an immortal line, you know. I know, I, mean, I know. People know just, that stuff. Uh, you know, everybody in, in West Dallas says that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they all say that. My parents saw this in, a, a, I think, a porno theater. <laughs> in Florida, and they started talking back to the screen, telling me not to go into this house. They were hip enough to know I shouldn't go in there. <laughs> they're goofing with you. Don't yeah. go in there. Yeah, they're goofing with you. 
recognizes the terrible towel. Mm. Yeah, it's a pretty blanket, yeah. net, so to speak. I honestly felt like I was acting in this in this scene that I got myself worked up to go in there. You know, I didn't. I had him block it out. You know, so this was where I felt like, for me, there was some acting that I was doing. Well, and prior to this, you were just kind of hanging I was, out. I was basically being myself. You know what I mean? The lines were basically kind of most of them were my, my own. Thank God you spiced up the script. Yeah, I <laughs> thank you. But it's showtime now. Come on out. Come on. Why don't you tell us about this scene and the and how it was directed and how you met Gunner? I mean, I think they they kind of gave me a, a, basically an idea of you're gonna go in, you're gonna look around, you're gonna go, you're gonna hear some knocking at the uh, at the freezer, and then you're gonna open it up. All of which I did, I thought very nicely. <laughs> now in the original, ah. you see this. Uh, in the original take, I, I'm I'm right on the money. Boom! I'm, I I give out this blood, you know, curdling, you know, scream, and the whole thing. And then they do cut, cut. They said, "Great scream, Alan," but let's wait till Leatherface is in the same shot. This is you one know. of my this is one of my favorite scenes in the whole thing when uh, he gets all perturbed because things aren't going the way they're supposed to do. And I just love this uh, this scene here. Uh, Gunner's so wonderful in this. He just this this lost soul because things just aren't going right. And he gives Leatherface heart and soul. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's just, human. Just, and there's no dialogue. And this scene, right. this, you know, I mean, so he puts his head in his hands. This is like, oh, things are just not going right at all. It's just wonderful. What about these now teeth? Now that is really Leatherface. Yeah, well, the They're... teeth was an appliance that. Uh, that's why they wanted the, the mouth on this mask very big, so they would see these teeth that they paid good money for. And uh, so, once again, going by what they would do, put a big piece of coat hanger wire in there to make the mouth real big and wired it in. And he also has a presence that, to me, the other leather faces do not have. have. They don't have it. And I don't know how you... I mean, he's well, a he big was, guy, but he has a presence that the others, yeah. I don't think, were well, able he went to, to the, He went to, to state duplicate. school and studied, you know, how some of the... Uh, some retarded people moved and things like that. And, this was and a shoot spent a lot hell. of time in it. What happened? You no, know, this is the one they... They really kept changing like, words and they... And then Toby and, come up and tell me that Paul said something about me. Mm -hmm. And Toby was going to Paul and saying, Marilyn said something about oh, you. Yeah. Yeah. And getting us really upset with each other. So when we were doing this scene, it didn't require any acting at all. No, we just... I was ready to kill you. And uh, I was ready to, you know, make you be in a wheelchair for the rest yeah. of the life. <laughs> and, and, and the sound, the, Everything the sound was going hood wrong. came off the, the camera and the... The batteries ran out of the sun gun, and, and just everything that could go wrong did, did go wrong. Now, this flashlight this here was, uh, they wanted to use it as a lighting yeah. instrument, yeah. Yeah. and it, this was done with uh, 16 reversal film, which just took a lot of light, and so they, uh, they took a, a sun gun yeah, and a took it apart and made this flashlight. is yeah. actually an electric sun gun. It's got a yeah. cord running off from it to... Uh, to uh, light the scenes. Well, that was on battery. I mean, it went no, off to the battery. No, this was on a this was on a cord. No, it wasn't because it caused the battery. I, I just sold the thing the other day on eBay. Oh, it had when a you cord. sold, I'd go get it. It has an electric <laughs> cord. Okay. Uh, the one I used was a battery. battery. Stuff. <laughs> well, at that time, you, this sun gun was just an, it would blind anybody. They, these days, using it on a on a film set because it was just had to have this ungodly amount of light, and there just was no such thing as a battery operated stuff like that at that time because the 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 power that was needed. Well, I mean, we had a regular flashlight that had batteries in it for some of the shots. Is this shot at night? Is it night for this night? Is it's at night. night. And this yeah. was real loud and irritating right here. Yes. Ah, yeah. that's where I wanted to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> we were physical there, very physical. You can yeah. see that is yeah. not play acting. That is ready to jump into the wheelchair <laughs> and push you over and jump on the floor. I know you were. 
And then they just say, do it again. Do it again. That was good. Oh, no, that wasn't good enough. Let's have more. And I'll be going. Yeah. See if you can get a little animosity going. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Give it a, just try a little bit. Sally, look, I know. Oh. Oh. Look, I'll go with you, but I'm going to hold Never mind, I'll just go without it. I didn't realize you were yelling at me. <laughs> Never mind, I'll do it myself. Sally, hold up a minute now. All right, let's go. Let's go. I'll, I'll go with you. And now this was particularly fun. Trying to push a wheelchair over holes and branches and yeah, rocks and, just and out, stones. Out just push it, Marilyn. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thanks, guys. What amazed me was we actually got out in the boonies there. Uh... Take 412. Just push it, Marilyn. <laughs> That's actually what your character's saying as well. Yeah. 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 Just push her how to down. Do it. Just push down, it, push down my... I'm killing my myself. <laughs> Who's telling you to do that? Is that Toby? No, no I was. we were. I was just saying I can't. I mean, it, I'm doing do it. It was do real. It, it, see, like, look at them trying. Because it's just in the cedar break. Uh, the mesquite <sighs> breaks there, and there's just there's crap all, all over the kinds trail. Of and stuff. And it's not like they prepped the trail for. There wasn't no. even a trail there, really. <laughs> are these all dolly shots? That's like on a track. The they camera. are here. Yeah, they laid a dolly yeah. out in there. I thought I heard something. There's a light. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It looks like a house. This is the scariest moment in the movie. Very, you know, for me, I jump every time. And I jumped for real that night because I was mm -hmm. so concentrated on pushing. And we hadn't seen Gunnar. I mean, we've seen him one time at dinner. He wasn't in his rig. But this is the first time that we'd seen him this in, his, in his speech. stuff. Was that purposeful? Yeah. Yeah. It would never, except for this, you know, we're never on the set with him at all. And then he just comes blaring out at us. And that guy's pretty scary when you see him in the middle of the night coming out at with you. The with a chainsaw going. Yeah. yeah. That little touch adds a lot to it. Right here, I think I say, there's a light. Yeah, there's a light over Some at the Frankenstein room. place. Uh, or the Leatherface place. <laughs> Sally, I hear something. Stop! Stop! Oh, yeah. oh. yes! That's oh. the head. Let's see if we can see the blood coming up. Yeah. And that blood's uh, that. people spitting, right? Yeah. Uh, Toby was to my right off camera, and uh, Dottie oh. Pearl was to my left, and we all had a mouthful of blood. Every time he would come in, we'd spit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, why don't you tell us about all this running and screaming, Mara? <laughs> <laughs> You'd run and scream, too, if you had a guy behind you with a chainsaw. Now, this is fun. They wanted me to get tangled in the mesquite. And I did. And had some thorns taken out the next day. Literally. You know, most of this stuff with the uh, chainsaw, for most of it, there was not a chain. You know, for wide shots, there would not be a chain on it. This particular part where it's supposed to be cutting through the brush, there is a chain on it. But then for a lot of the things, there's a chain with all the teeth filed off. Uh -huh. so but that doesn't matter. That chain is still just we had as in bad. about three different uh, uh, configurations there. But for this stuff where it's actually supposed to be chasing, I mean, cutting through things, he actually was. And not too far behind me. Yeah. And that little mask gives him bad vision. And so, yes. you know, and there's times where the chainsaw's so loud, they can't, he can't hear cut. Like Marilyn's stuck for real in the mesquite right there with her yeah, hair tight. Yeah, yeah. Cut, cut. And but so he did. can't hear. <laughs> he just kept coming. And Marilyn can't get out of there. How did you actually get approached to be in the movie in the first place, Marilyn? I knew that they were gonna, they were gonna make this movie. I believe they asked me. I knew Warren Skarin. They knew Toby and Kim. And I'd been doing some movies in Texas and with the Film Commission. So that's how that got started. Well, I recall when they had the break on the night that they were shooting you going through the stuff. And you and I think it was Sally Richardson. And you were over in the corner and you were picking 
mesquite thorns out of the like person. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. that's like a Max Sennett. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, chase scene. Yeah, that's a kind of a Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies. Mm -hmm. Now, why would you? That's it, girl. Lock the door. He can't get through. Yeah. <laughs> That'll help. Well, at least you go upstairs this time instead of into the slaughter room. Yeah. yeah. When I read the script, one of the first things I said was, "You've got three generations of men in this house and no women." And I said, "What's the deal here? We got to do something." And so uh, he called for his grandpa to be up in the attic, and so. Uh, I said, well, at least let me make a grandma to be up there with her. And so that's how grandma appeared there. She was my idea and uh, has grandma taken was... on quite a uh, character of her own through the years. Yeah. Where is she? Oh, she's, uh, I think, I think a guy named Tom Renoni has grandma bought a years ago. Mm. Now, these stunts were done by Mary Church. She was a girlfriend and the assistant. Uh, she's a did several jobs on it. Yeah. But you had to do the landing, right, Marilyn? Yeah, he put me on well, a scaffolding. Was, it was shot in two pieces because there was a little roof up there and we put a thing so when she goes through... You still had to drop had you about six feet, I think. I know. That, that's how I hurt my were, ankle. Uh, mattresses to catch her up there, and then uh, this did the second part of it. It was just coming off a scaffolding. Yeah, this is the part where everyone's like, just get up. They don't care the yeah, fact yeah. that you've jumped out of a window. You know? <laughs> get up and start running. I think Gunner dropped about 40 pounds doing this movie. I'm sure, particularly after the dinner sequence, mm. which we're on our way to. I liked the next scene, I believe it is, where the, the script calls for her to run into a tree. I think Toby said that a lot of this um, running through the mesquite was actually done in quite a small area. They would do yeah. it from the side and then go mm -hmm. back and, and, and do it again, and it was uh, obviously, it seems like it's over quite a wide area. And they only had, I guess, so much track, well, they you know, for the dolly, you know, so... Well, you know, the shooting schedule was so fast, and they uh, it took a lot of light to get this, even this much light, Wham. because of the... Here's your tree. There's oh, my tree. There it is. Let's... I like that. That was real comfortable. But that was scripted? Yeah. Yeah. You knew when you read the script you were in for some kind of ride. So what do we think of the, those who have seen it? What do we think of the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Well, it's it, it's the other it's the other extreme. It has no risk taking at all. It's not over the top. It's very conservative. It's everything you've ever seen in other scary movies, and so it might have a little scare or two, but nobody's going to you know, be shocked at it. Nobody's going to lose any sleep at night over it, you know, because they made seventy million dollars. <laughs> but that's what it looks like. It's made. There's no. There's no risk taking in it. There's no uh, no suspense. No really. I could I could you know. never figure out why they would do it. I mean, I thought we did an okay job. We did it fine. Why would you want to redo it? Yeah, it's all down to economics, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Right. it's money. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if they can figure that there's a such a cult following, let's see what we can do with the remake. They poured what nine million dollars. We had what forty thousand. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's well photographed. You know what I mean? And uh, obviously by Daniel are, Pearl. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, they had some much better production values at the risk of losing the graininess or the raw. You know, we weren't actors. I wasn't. It's Chainsaw on MTV. Yeah. Yeah. Just, well, you know, the original convinced the world that such an event existed, but the way it was shot, it came across sort of like a documentary of the event itself, and so the film became the event itself, and so... It's not like it's a, you know, some lasting drama that, you know, somebody can put a different twist on or something because they, the, what made it work was the, the immediacy of it that each of the actors took the character off and, and was creating these, these believable realities. And so with no money at all. A good example of that is that the scene that you pointed out that you like where Gunner's like, where are these people yeah. coming from? They kind of redo that in the new one, but he just takes his mask off and you see his face. Yeah. And the the point of the scene is to see his face underneath the mask and not to uh, to actually show a bit more about Leatherface's mm. character. I didn't see anything about Leatherface mm. in the new one. It just looked like a guy wearing a mask, nothing behind it. Well, they didn't really use him as a character. 
Right, they had other people talking about him. About him but he was teased at school. You know, he was not used as but a character. But he wasn't. He was just a figure. That's not Leatherface. It was face. formulaic filmmaking. You know. This was real meat. You know. Yeah. Strung up in there, but then we, you know, painted them with grease so they'd be dripping because there's nothing, there's no fire in there at all. It's oh, all, but that was real lighting. meat. Yeah, that, that was, was pretty meat, disgusting. Yeah. I remembered it. Here again, this pickup truck was just a borrowed pickup truck for a friend of mine who has this weird looking pickup truck. I like it that the door doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Had you interacted much with Jim before this sequence? Because this sequence was quite a difficult one to do, right? No, I don't think uh, Jim... And, in fact, Jim, Toby kept saying, hit her harder, hit her harder. And he'd go, man, I don't, you know, Toby, you know, and he finally I said, Jim, just go for it. We're never going to get out of here. Well, I have no trouble. Not out of it. What do you want? No, no, no. There's no need to do that. <laughs> Nobody's gonna hurt you. Again, I really like that. You know, something like this. He's he's using you know a broom to defend himself. It's not like you know some yeah. horrible you know weapon of destruction, but you know it's a a broom in the wrong hands. The broom can hurt weapon. you. I'll tell you, a broom yeah. is painful. He looks like he's finally getting into it, though. Yes, yeah. he did. <laughs> That's the black eye. The next day, worked well for the script, though. Mm -hmm. Here, then that's not the that's not the broom handle, the wood handle. That's a piece of rubber or some rubberized. That hurt. I particularly like that brand of rope too. It does wonders for your skin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really soft on the hair too. Make it good and tight. Now, someone get a rag, so they did. No one knows where that rag was, but they found it on the floor somewhere, put it in my mouth. Ah, oh, the this theater, is, this the is, cinema. <laughs> the reality of it. Yeah, they wanted me to have a really, realism. I mean, realism, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And how long did you spend in the bag at a time? Well, I didn't spend that long in the bag. Because <laughs> I, I, by the end of that scene, I was pretty gone. So Mary Church got to get in that bag. I got to be on the floor here. They didn't make me stay in the bag. They let me be out of the bag when he's doing his... Yes, of course, because there's no, yeah. no person in shot. Here's a great, but this was that another been, great line. Yeah, of the utilities. I like this one. This just adds the comedic touch to it. Yeah, Jim so has a lot again, of great lines. You know. <laughs> Lock up and get the lights. Uh, cost electricity is enough to drive a man out of business. He could turn out to be a bad guy, but still in all, his There's his a mind. humanity about it. He's a businessman. Well, you know, well, all of it is, you know, they're a family. They <laughs> argue among themselves. Right. and. You know, there's a real connection between these people, and they've got thoughts about other things than killing people, you know, saving well, I, electricity. I hate to admit it, and... but I recognize a lot yeah. of those weirdos. Yeah. You know, and, and bits and pieces of them. And This was just pure Jim Cedow here. He was uh, doing this as it kind of went along, and it's just, just wonderful. Where are the cameras here? I mean, how were they shooting this? Well, this would have been a, a camera mount on the hood here. On the hood? Did they take the glass out for that? No. And then this is from, again, uh, Daniel just does, loves to shoot in tight places, so here he was actually in the, in the truck. But this was, this was a camera was strapped onto the hood of the, uh, mounted on the hood of the car. There's no, no need to do that. <laughs> Are you there for most of these shots in Not case they have end, a, no? no? Well, the art department was me and Mary Church. And right. So, you know, you're having to get things ready for the next day and cover things for that day and one thing and another, so... Uh, it, a whole lot of these things that uh, Mary was being the the pokey at this point. <laughs> oh, Mary's uh, yeah, Mary's uh, Mary's the one that's the beneficiary of the poking. <laughs> <laughs> and where's Marilyn? Uh, Marilyn's resting. Resting in the trailer. <laughs> Marilyn's in the medic tent. <laughs> oh. 
And again, these were just these were shot mostly on, at the uh, at the location because this this is a long driveway. Cool now they're all coming home. He's kind of bringing them back, you know. It's kind of it's family time now. Yeah. What does he have in his yeah. hand? Some kind of it's a rabbit, isn't it? Oh, it's a, a pelt it's, of some In sort. theory, it's a dead animal. It was a. Uh, also, this is a great Road shot. Killer. I love this shot here. <laughs> you know, that's one of the, my favorites. The lights and this, you know. Yeah, the, with the turning turning up the dust and it's all lit yeah. from behind like this and. Uh, and again, it's the family beating on each other, you know, so they beat on each other as much as they beat on other people, sort of. But here again, all the actors really got into it, being being the family and and interacting in, in very believable family interactions, as it were. So That's right. Pretty, I love the way uh, I love the way Jim Cedo is sort of like the the patriarch of them, yeah, but they still yeah. have no respect for him and <laughs> yeah. talk back to him oh. and whatever. In theory, they're supposed to be brothers, but of course, it, uh, most people came across like Jim Cedo was the father because you got the grandfather as well. So, but in theory, he was the older brother. So you got these three siblings that are carrying on, but Jim Cedo is certainly the one that they're. Uh, uh, is in charge, which is why when Gunner chases her to the to the station, to the gas station, he drops away. Yeah. Because you know the one, one in charge is there. Is, and he's yeah. One of my favorite lines is coming up where he says, "You ruined the door." Yeah. <laughs> Now Gunner's in his second getter. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize he was changing masks, but here he's being the cook, and so he's got this, I mean, he's uh, preparing dinner, so he's got his little old granny lady uh, mask on and his apron, and uh, he's got his, uh, his his new outfit on here. I like the armchair. I don't know who has the mm -hmm. armchair these days. Uh, a friend also of mine down in Houston has quite a number of, I mean, in San Antonio. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Here's that wonderful rag again. That was so gross. It had little gritty things in it. <laughs> it was really gross. It smelled. Now, this is the bit where, where Gunnar actually does a little bit of sort of pseudo-speaking. Yeah, he's talking about that she's in here and... Oh, get away. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> What kind of language is it? Is it a form of Esperanto? Is no, it he was Latin? just, you know, it was just kind of guttural, <laughs> trying, to, guttural trying, to say, trying to say words, you know, sort of primitive, trying to say some words. I think you'll see some of those actually written down in that new book that uh, Chainsaw Massacre Companion. See, had he been in a Head Titan Start language. program, you know, this whole could have been, <laughs> thing been could have been turned around. He's very similar to you, though, Ed Neil, there, because he's he's spitting in yeah. the same way that you were, or blowing raspberries. Yeah. I think Toby was getting off on the raspberries himself a little bit. Young lady, you just you just take it easy there now, but we'll we'll fix you some supper in a few minutes, huh? So, what are your memories of being inside this house, Marilyn? I remember that. Well, you you just saw me get in, that's how I got in. Uh, next thing you know, my arms are tied, I'm gagged, and next thing you know, they're tormenting me. You just take it easy, huh? You take it easy, huh? We'll have some meat right away. Now, would all of this have been shot at the same, as part of the 26-hour shoot, or was that no, just the, the dinner, dinner scene? the dinner sequence was right. the, this was the separate. long one. But I like this where Ed's going to come up and bother me. Yeah, we did all the poking. And the, yeah, you know. and so what I did, I'm trying to get away from so I kept turning till the chair fell over and my hands and feet are still tied and I'm gagged. And they go, oh God, she ran out of the shot. And I'm sitting there on the floor and they're going, well, let's go on to this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone pick up Marilyn. <laughs> I guess they really wanted me to feel part, you know, really in character. Where did all these skins come from, Bob? Oh, they were, you know, collected wherever I could find them. None, none came from live animals at the time. That they were uh, just go around and find uh, 
pelts where and most of the stuff I got, you know, in junk stores and things like that. We had no budget. I think the the, the total uh, art direction budget was I, th I think I spent about fifteen hundred dollars, literally. The mask for the grandfather because, was that uh, Dr. Barnes? Did he do that? Yeah, Dr. Mm -hmm. Barnes did the grandfather's make the mm -hmm. make uh, makeup. I think uh, the kid was like fourteen, I think, in this. Well, nineteen. I think he was nineteen. Grand. I don't think. Probably. I think he was really? fourteen. Uh, John, John Duggan. Duggan. John Duggan. John yeah, Duggan. I, think, I, think, I, thought I thought he was, he was older. Too, oh, he was. He was older. He was I think he was about nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah. I think. The, actually, the armchair was never built for this, the tortures that were put through in this sequence, and so they yeah. kind of decided to make it so that the armchair did break a time or two, you just yeah. had to do repairs, because it was not what it was originally intended to do. Yeah. You know, John was in the graveyard scene. Mm -hmm. We did back in yeah. the one that was at uh, where Sally goes walking off in there. So what happened to him, Aaron? This well, is where I around. found out this year that they really didn't forget no. to tape the knife. They just didn't tape the knife because the tape kept messing up, and they couldn't get the little um, little tube right on it, so they just decided to cut my finger to say, get the shot. And all these years, I thought they just forgot. And Gunner said, oh, no, Marilyn, this was this year. We needed that shot, and it was getting hot, and we were losing time, and so this they decided. This is a great shot here. Mm-hmm. So having made the uh, Leatherface faces, and uh, what, did you not want to have a crack at the, the grandpa makeup? Well, uh, that, that was something that they had already talked to this. I, I was not, you know, that, that, was a, that was a lot of work. That was a different, uh, different deal altogether. You know, we could just have hired an old guy, you know, who <laughs> would have saved yeah. us a lot of time and money. Well, I think that uh, I think Dr. Barnes wanted to do yeah, that. I think he, so. was, uh, he liked to do things like See that. See that, so a black guy there? That. Yeah. yeah. So this was the... Uh, now this is the scene that was uh, the 20, 26, 28 hours because the re part of the reason was because Jim Cedow had to leave the next day and this was his last day and so it had to had to take forever and also it was night time, it was shot during the day, well it was shot over 28 hours so the windows were blacked in, there was no ventilation and the food on the plates and the uh, little hot lights and everything stank, everybody stank and this was the the disgusting scene. The table here, the table here is made out of old diving boards. Wow. Old wooden, the, the parks department. Oh, and also the lamp there, the face there is Bill Parsley, the executive producer. His, his face on the lamp <laughs> over the table. Fitting. <laughs> you can make him stop doing it. <laughs> Shut your mouth. The head cheese was smelling pretty good by now. Really? Well, everything stinks. The little chicken, little chicken feet. Mm. And Gunner's, his suit, they were afraid to wash it or anything and through the through the whole thing, and so he had, had to wear this thing, and uh, everybody and everything stank to high heaven. Fortunately, I didn't have to be in there. Right. <laughs> but you had collected up a number of dead animals with that, wasn't it, through... Um, Dotty Pearl and her connections. That well, she she worked for a, uh, a veterinarian. Uh, sorry to say, a plastic surgeon that had all these bones around. No, a, pl a veterinarian uh, who owned some land outside of Austin, and so the animals of his that had died, that would die under his care or whatever, he would take them out to a place on his land and let them turn them over to nature. And so we went out there, and there was a kind of pit that had all, all kinds of. Uh, of parts in it, and so that's where a lot of the animal bones came from. Uh, there were very few oh. actual human bones in it. In the whole movie, we, we bought one skeleton and had a, uh, some other uh, uh, parts that were plastic. And then some of the skulls came from a friend of mine that were actually sort of archaeological leftovers. <laughs> Now, isn't this scene, or isn't there where they had to go back and reshoot and do some inserts? I, I remember hearing something not about this that. Not this one. It was the very out. end. With the yeah, eyeballs that's and stuff? Yeah. Oh, they, that, they, that one, yeah. They, they had to come back and, I don't know. No, we just shot, I shot about four hours on my eyeball. Yeah. We just had the camera. Right. What was that for? For this shot. For that right there. For, for black this, eye and all. 
just uh, they didn't have it they didn't have enough shots of that oh or? they didn't do it they just they just somewhere else they didn't have time to do this it took forever they just he just concentrated on shooting my eyes and then he intercut it with this because if, if see this stuff took that took a while I really love Jim Seed out here where he's laughing and then he gets serious and says, we can't do this. And well, he then catches he goes, himself, you know, yeah, and then he gets back just, into it. No, it's wonderful. He says, I can't cotton to this, and then he does. And... and this is uh, Gunner's third get-up here. Yeah, this one, he has this beautiful lady mask that he's, he, they're sitting down to dinner, and so he gets dressed, and he's got his suit on, and he's got his formal mask on. They're sitting down to formal dinner. Yeah, they have guests for dinner, so, literally. But it has excess makeup on it here, right? His mask. He wanted to be pretty. Yeah, this one was a, a little point of contention because he, he wanted, uh, Toby wanted a, a beautiful woman mask, and so I, you know, worked very hard, took a mask of a very beautiful woman. And or made this, and then uh, uh, worked it over to where it was recognizably the mask itself, a very beautiful woman. And then, once oh, again, Toby likes to go lock himself away and do things. And he came out and he had the one that had, had ripped it apart and changed it and smeared the paint over it. And you couldn't tell that it actually was a beautiful woman. And uh, but at any rate, it's, uh, the it idea is that he's getting, he's gotten all <laughs> ready for, decked out for dinner. Let's let him have a whack. <laughs> the masks, I really had to work very hard to find, a, you know, come up with a substance that actually looked like parchmenty human skin rather than a rubber mask because rubber just doesn't look like human skin. And so I uh, experimented around, kind of came up with this product that was uh, with uh, liquid latex and then some real fine layers of uh, yellow insulation material, fiberglass, and then embedded it in this. And it turned these colors. None of these were painted. They were they turned this flesh color, this parchmenty look, so you could get this translucency to it. And you guys had actually left the shoot by this point because they yeah. shot mostly in sequence, right? Yeah, yeah. Mostly. I was not. Uh, I don't think I even came in. You missed watched. out on I the fun of the uh, of this. Stanford, I heard about it, but I was not involved. In it. But your armadillo is back on the table there. Yeah. Well, that's what it was made for. I had I had actually run a, was out getting these things, and I'd run across a fresh roadkill that had just been hit with this armadillo, and so I think I'll learn taxidermy. So I got it and went and got a book about taxidermy, and and. Uh, Officially taxidermy in the armadillo. You tell us about this sequence, uh, Marilyn, where they're holding your head over the bucket and hitting you with a hammer. Oh yeah, well that little hammer, they they put a piece of foam rubber to make it look like the sledgehammer, but that the little stick is still steel. So you can't, if you're hitting somebody well, through foam rubber, that hurt still, that hurt. Mm -hmm. That was... That was a wooden handle, but nonetheless, it was... It oh. felt like steel. Yeah. It was wood. But it was, yeah. They were also gentle with me. Mm-hmm. Each actor tried their best not to hurt her. I love it. They used to snicker between takes. I love Jim takes. jumping up and down like they're cheering them on. They yeah. did. Here again, this is Mary Church doing the stunt. And that was Marilyn jumping from the scaffolding then, uh, right here, which they, was six we, feet high. We had such a low budget, we couldn't afford to buy breakaway windows. I had to actually make them in sugar mm. glass windows made in my kitchen. How many windows were there? I think I had two of each, but not no spares. So that limp's real now. Mm -hmm. And then they go. That was the one that you had about a six foot jump mm -hmm. off the scaffold. And yeah. I said to you, what do you want me? You gotta be kidding. He says, no, we gotta make it look like you. I said, why couldn't I just jump from the first floor to the first floor? Why do I have to jump from the scaffolding? <sighs> so this is the first time that you really see it, a lot of blood. That's the only the time, film. really. Yeah. Yeah. Each scene, it looks like there's more blood on you, know, on you. They just, like, 
And didn't it dye your hair for a little while? Oh, there? yeah. It was red food coloring. Getting the chocolate syrup out of it, too, along with the bees and the ants. How I kept from dying on this uh, running over hitchhiker here. I had a, oh. that shot there, I had a mannequin made out of, you know, stuffing and PVC, and I was actually on a ladder off to the side holding him up on a wire so that, you know, a truck actually hits it, and how that kept from yanking me off that Really? Me, just beyond me. Do you know Ed, the guy, the truck driver? Ed Gwynn, yeah. He's he was player. in a group, I think, called the Conqueroo, one of the early, yeah. you know, psychedelic groups. Yeah, he's a musician, but he yeah. was also a truck driver. This was his truck. I didn't we know We put that. a piece of metal over the door here. So this is the sequence you had to come back and shoot again after you thought you'd taken off those pants for the for last the time. For the last time. And they said, no, Marilyn, we've got to shoot the ending again. I said, what do you mean we have to shoot the ending? We did that. This was the most gore in the whole thing. Coming up here was uh, That's where he goes. the only real gore effect and the special effect in it. And it's really funny because this one was done with the chainsaw with all the teeth sawed off it. And I put all the meat and the blood pack under there. And they said, boy, don't, you know, don't worry about it, you know, distressing it. This will cut right through that. So they set it on there and it just went. Zzz, 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 zzz. <laughs> and they had to go and distress it so it cut through there. <laughs> Where did Ed Gwynn go to? Yeah, I think he just ran to the next town, huh? He's still running today. The ending is pretty powerful, too. Yeah, I love that show. Leatherface's dance. <laughs> we spoke to Ed Neal the other day, and he asked if we could call him. Can we get a phone in here? <laughs> Hi, Ed. There's somebody cackling. It must be Ed. It must be Ed. Hey, you crazy bunch of people. I wish I was down there with you guys. I'm just sitting up here in Dallas. Signing pieces of paper for kids. Boy, is this fun. After all these years, they body parts it. and uh, chainsaw blades. And I signed a while ago, I signed a, a, a stiletto knife. And earlier this morning, I signed a, a, a switchblade knife. <laughs> good. Ooh, it's scary. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing good. How you I doing? I make you good. <laughs> <laughs> So do you have as uh, fond memories of making this movie as everybody else here does? Oh, heck yeah. I, I, I love sitting back on the back porch and, and drinking tea and thinking about my experiences in the film trade in Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> Marilyn was just reminiscing about uh, you pushing her over in a chair. Oh, yeah, what happened was we took the shot and... Uh, and, of course, I was behind her, and so the, the crew was all excited that they got the shot. So they're stepping over going, boy, that went well, that was great. And Marilyn was just laying down there on the floor, and they just left her down there. I finally said, would somebody please pick Marilyn up? <laughs> they went, oh, yeah, <laughs> sorry, Marilyn. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you remember of that 26-hour dinner scene, Ed? I have been having more fun signing. I've got a, a great photograph from that scene, which my face just looks like. And everybody looks at it and goes, wow, you are such a great actor. And I'm going, yeah, I, I really look tired in that shot, don't I? <laughs> I am so good. I said, we were really tired. Yeah, but, but you know, the nice thing about that is cut two years later and you get to sell hundreds of photographs for that scene. So it's become one of the legendary shoots in film history now, and that's kind of fun. <laughs> All right, well, you have a good time at the convention there, Ed. I'm having great fun, man. It, 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 good to talk to y'all and tell everybody out there, oh, yeah, I'll be home soon and I'll be bringing some hit cheese. <laughs> All right, thanks, Ed. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Ed. Bye, Ed. See you. Bye, guys. <laughs>